Warning, I am not a medical professional. Please do not listen to any imbecile like me on the internet when it comes to medical advice. If you need medical attention, always contact a medical professional or if you need immediate medical attention, dial 911. So this is the monster of the forest. It is poison ivy. And it's one of the, it's my nemesis uh, in the summertime. I deal with this on a regular basis every summer. I'm trimming on the homestead. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, pulling logs out of the forest or doing whatever I need to do. My chores, whatever work we're doing around the homestead, you encounter this. It's all over our property. And, uh, you know, it affects me for a full week. And it's just, it's just itching this just horrible, you know, it just makes your life miserable. And, and other than this, the only other plant in the woods that really affects me is stinging nettle when you find that. But the effects of poison, poison ivy it, far, in my opinion, is far worse than stinging nettle. Stinging nettle will only affect you maybe for a day or two, but this can go for a whole week of just giving you agonizing torment. And so poison ivy, there is a solution that will help you beat the effects of poison ivy every single time. And it grows, at least in this area right here, just right next to it. Let me show you. This, my friends, is jewelweed. And it is the solution that you can use every single time to, to take the pain and agony out of poison ivy and do so with relative ease. A number of years ago, uh, I met a couple of uh, ladies who um, were, had grown up, you know, um, in in places like this in rural America and at birth you know when they were young kids their mother I don't know how young they were but they were little girls these two sisters and their mom made them take a bath full of this stuff she had they had filled up the bathtub and harvested a bunch of this jewel weed and made them take a bath like almost like a giant tea and made them take a bath and their mother's reasoning was that if you and I don't know if this is true an old wives tale but the whole idea was that if you take a bath with this at a young age and, and soak yourself in it, and she did this for all of her children, that you will be for life immune to the effects of poison ivy. And for them, they thought it was true because they had never encountered or had allergic reactions to poison ivy at all in their life. And they attributed it to because th their mother had used uh, that, that early experience of giving them a bath with just a bunch of this stuff in a bathtub like a giant tea and their body soaked it up and they said they were they were never allergic to poison ivy their whole life and so i don't know if that's true or not i think we may try that for our children because we have a ton of it that grows here on the homestead on one of our edges of the property here and uh, grows in places where there's lots of water they love lots of water um and so uh there's lots of it here and i just want to show you some of the aspects of this we're going to harvest a bunch of this and we're going to make a tincture now a week ago, I encountered some poison ivy while trimming, and I got a bunch of poison ivy on my legs and on my arms. And what I did was I harvested one of these plants, and I made a tea uh, out of the fresh leaves. Fresh leaves, made a tea out of it, um, and then drank it. And within a, within a day or so, all the poison ivy was gone. I, 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 there was no more effects of the itching and just the agony that poison ivy causes. And so it was all gone. It was great. And so what I think I'm going to do, and I'm going to make a tincture of this. Um, we purchased some alcohol recently, and we're going to uh, some vodka, and we're going to make a tincture of this. And so that any time I encounter a, a heavy dose of poison ivy while on the homestead and working on the homestead, I can just take a shot of this tincture, and that should do the same thing with the tea, except it's more in a more concentrated form of the medicinal properties, and it should take it away even quicker. Now, um, you know, if you can find this plant... Uh, I would highly recommend you know harvesting some of this, and even if you keep the dried leaves and you dry it so that you can use it at a future time, you're still going to have the benefits of you know the effects and the benefits of this jewel weed on the poison ivy. People have told me it doesn't work as fast, but it's still highly, highly effective and way more effective than some of the stuff that you can purchase in the stores to treat poison ivy. So, you know, be that as it may, whether that's true or not, you can you know, let your own, your own mileage may vary. But uh, uh, I know for a fact that this works. It works very, very well. And so what I'm going to do for some of the patrons, our, our higher level patrons, I'm going to go ahead and harvest some of this. And I'm going to be sending it to you uh, so that you guys can keep it and uh, use it at, at your own convenience. Uh, but we're going to make a tincture today. I'm going to harvest some of this and I'm going to 
we're going to make it show you how we're going to make a tincture and then if you want to do the same process at home you can do so now the name of this plant is called jewelweed it's very easily identifiable once you learn uh, what it looks like you can see the leaves you know what the leaves look like they have teeth on the leaves large teeth um, it's very smooth on the top very smooth on the underside but the best way to identify this is the flower and the flower kind of looks like a cup and so you can kind of see down, it's got this cup down there where, where insects can crawl down into and get the nectar from the plant. And um, very, it, it's maybe hard to identify until the flowering happens in, you know, July, August. Uh, it, that's what makes it the most identifiable is this flower. It's very, it's also sometimes called touch me not, um, which is weird because there's nothing that would keep you from touching this plant. But uh, it's also called jewelweed or touch me not. You can find more information online about it. But that's the easiest way to identify it is this flower when it comes up in July and August. Another amazing aspect of this plant are the seed pods that it produces. Uh, here's the seed pod right here laying on top of this leaf. And you can see the flower up here. So you know this is jewelweed. These seed pods amazing, amazingly explode. Um, you have to be very careful when you try to collect the seeds of these things. And I'm not trying to do that here, but I want to show you. This is kind of a new seed pod. And so, oh, there it goes. And see, it just kind of pops open. So you got to be kind of careful. If it's a mature seed pod, it will explode and send the seeds flying. Now, this, is, this one hadn't matured yet, and so it, it kind of blew up in my fingers here. But amazing little... Uh, <laughs> Way to, that's how it distributes seed. It, it, when the seed pod becomes mature and becomes a little bit more brittle, it explodes with the slightest touch. And this one didn't do that really so much because it's, it's still green and uh, it's not so brittle. It's, not, it's, a, it's a new seed pod. But really interesting aspect of this plant is how it distributes seeds by exploding seed pods. And there are a number of plants in nature that do that. Um, that's how they distribute their seeds. Uh, so you can see we got a lot of jewelweed, a lot of touch me not, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to take this and now make it into a tincture. And the way we do that is you take any cheap vodka you can find. I always prefer the ones that are in glass. So the cheapest vodka you can find that's actually in glass. And um, you're going to basically find any jar you can find. I have three jars here. These are just old peach jars, peach slice jars. And we're going to put, we're going to tear these up chop them up and then put them in these jars, fill these jars, and then fill them up to the brim with the vodka. And then after that, we're going to let it sit for about seven days. You know, you can let it sit for up to two weeks if you really want to be sure that all of the medicinal properties of the jewelweed get taken out by the vodka and into the liquid. And then once that's done, you pour off the liquid and you can save it in some sort of bottle like this. Um, we save all of our own, you know, liquor bottles and, um, We'll, we'll just take the labels off and then save these for future reuse. And if you're not a big drinker or if you don't drink at all and you want to be able to find some of these, you can go to your local liquor store or local bar and ask them to pay them maybe a small fee or maybe they'll even give them to you for free. Uh, usually the bars turn these in for a recycle uh, uh, fee that they get paid for. Um, but sometimes you can get them for free or you can just pay them a little bit of money that they would normally get from their recycler to get some of these neat bottles. And a lot of times these bottles, you know, are kind of decorated and, and uh, they just have neat glass shapes. And so you can save these or, or get these from bars. And then that's where you put uh, the liquid that you pour off from this, uh, the vodka, and then you have your tincture. And you can use that for any time that you, you need it, you know, in a future time where you get maybe a, a poison ivy rash and um, it, the medicinal value of the tincture is far higher than that of just a tea. Even though the tea works great, um, this also will work even uh, faster and just better. And there's lots of tutorials online. You can do more research about tinctures. Um, we have made tinctures in the past, elderberry tinctures and other things. And um, there's lots of great channels out there that talk about, you know, the, you know, the herbalist channels that talk about the medicinal value of some plants and how to make tinctures and, uh, that you can use on, on a regular basis or whenever you need them for whatever purpose. So anyway... We'll go ahead and get these things cut up, get them into the jars, and then fill them up with the vodka.
So there you go. Uh, you can already start to see the discoloration. At least I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, the vodka is pulling out all of the juices and moisture from the plant itself. And it takes about seven days for that process to complete. Although if you want to leave it in there for two weeks, that's fine too, just to make sure you got everything uh, out, as much as possible out of the leaves and the plant stems and everything, all the beneficial uh, ingredients that you're going to want. So, um, you know, it's that simple. Leave it in there for a week, two weeks, and uh, took about almost a whole jar of, of the vodka. We got some more tinctures we're going to make, you know, so we have some extra. Um, uh, you know, it's, good, it's a good idea to have some of this stuff on hand, especially here where there's just so much poison ivy. And uh, for me, it's, I mean, I hate poison ivy. I get it everywhere I go. I'm highly allergic to it. And uh, it just seems like I'm always in it because of the work and stuff that you have to do around here. But anyway, that's how you make it. Very simple. We got a lot of extra stuff left. This is all going to the patrons. I'm going to be cutting this up today and packaging this and getting it out to you guys as soon as possible. It's going to go out this week. So um, there you go, patrons. Um, and then and the dried stuff that you're going to get is just great enough just to make teas. You can make teas you know, with the dried stuff. It'll work just as good. Probably not, maybe not just as good, but very, it'll work very, way better than the stuff you're going to buy in the store. So uh, you guys can uh, use that and save it. We've been using that off and on too. People, when we first got here, one of our neighbors uh, brought this stuff to us when they found out that I was allergic to poison ivy. And they were like, hey, try this. And I remember hearing about it from years ago from the two ladies I mentioned before. Uh, this is really, truly an amazing plant. And uh, seeing it grow right next to the poison ivy, it's almost like nature's way of saying, hey, yeah, there's this, but then there's also this. So take advantage. All right, we'll see you next time on American Homestead. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up button below the video. It really means a lot to us. And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Now you can support an American Homestead by becoming a patron. Visit patreon.com slash anamericanhomestead to see all the benefits of becoming a patron of our channel. You'll get access to private videos, pictures, and even live question and answer sessions that you can participate in. Some patrons will even receive free gifts throughout the year from the homestead. Visit patreon.com slash anamericanhomestead to check it out and see the rewards of supporting our channel.